Today we're issuing our latest report on the Irish property market, which looks at the performance of the property market over the first nine months of 2022, and in particular at its performance over the last quarter. There have been a lot of conflicting reports on the property market in recent weeks, both in terms of price performance and supply. So hopefully today's report will give you a much greater level of clarity as to what's actually happening on the ground. Firstly, if we look at price performance. Average values in Ireland grew by 1.1% in the last quarter and 5.5% in the year to date. And this does reflect a modest deceleration on price growth in 2021, when average values grew by just over 7% in the same period. Looking at the Dublin market, average values increased by 0.9% in the quarter and 5.2% in the year to date, whereas average values outside of Dublin grew by about 5.9% or slightly higher in the same period. And this trend line of higher price inflation outside of Dublin has been evident for a little over a year now and is unusual in terms of the normal course of events for the property market. When you look at that performance in terms of a deceleration of supply, there is a very clear reason for this. In the immediate post-pandemic period, we did see a frenzied level of activity in the market overall. And when this was met by very, very low levels of supply, we saw an above trend level of price inflation for much of 2021 and into the opening weeks of 2022. The combination of a modest increase in supply available for sale in the second-hand market in particular, and the geopolitical challenges that are evident today has led to a reduction in that pace of inflation. However, demand still remains very robust. When we look at supply, our latest analysis shows that there were 15,300 units available for sale in the summer of 2022. Now, this is a very modest uptick of where we were on the historically low levels last year. There are now 1,800 more houses available for sale in this summer versus the same period last year. However, to put that in context, it is important to note that that represents only 0.8% of the housing stock in the country overall, which is critically low. And also, if we compare that current supply levels to where we were in the pre-pandemic period, there are now about 8,000 less houses available for sale in Ireland today versus the position in the summer of 2019, which is a 26% reduction, which is very critical. Also, if you look at the comparisons across a county by county level, we can see different performances in rural Ireland versus urban Ireland. While the average stock is down about 26% across the country overall, there are some counties in rural Ireland where stock levels are down by over 50%. And this is what is fueling the higher level of price inflation outside of Dublin rather than within the capital, which would be the normal trend. Unfortunately, the shortage of supply is not just evident in houses available for sale, there is a huge accommodation crisis in the rental sector as well. As has been well documented, the exodus of private investors from the marketplace still persists. In the trend lines that have been evident for over 10 years now, we see a very low level of investor activity buying into the second-hand market and a very large volume of our, of our vendors selling their investment property. So in the first nine months of this year, only 13% of the houses bought through Sherry Fitzgerald were investors buying in the marketplace, whereas 36% of our vendors were investors leaving the marketplace. So this represents about one investor coming into the market for every three that are exiting. And this is putting a huge pressure on the available accommodation in the rental sector. Now, if we look at trend lines in terms of transaction activity and buyer profiles, the predominant purchaser in the marketplace remains owner-occupiers, representing about 79% of all the purchasers in the year to date, of which about 50% of those were first-time buyers. And this high proportion of first-time buyers in the second-hand market um, is likely to persist in months and, year ahead, and years ahead, particularly when we see that contraction in the commencement data, which is beginning to emerge in 2022, which points to, unfortunately, a reduction in the quantity of stock being built in the year ahead rather than the anticipated increase. Finally, if we look at transaction levels in the housing market, there were about 26,240 transactions in the first six months of this year, which is higher than it was in the same period in 2019 in the pre-pandemic period. Average transaction volumes are up about 8%, while transactions in new homes are up 3% on 2019 
and transactions in the second-hand market are up about 10%. All in all, there is no doubt that we're still in the midst of a very complex and deep-rooted accommodation crisis. And indeed, Budget 2023 in recent weeks was the perfect opportunity for the government to come in with some solutions and policy changes to address this. Unfortunately, it was a missed opportunity. Furthermore, rather than bringing about some significant changes for the rental sector, we saw the government bringing in a 500 euro tax credit for renters. While I'm sure this will be welcomed by many, it represents about 3% of average annual rental levels in the country, so will not have a very significant impact in terms of affordability. And more importantly, it doesn't address the crux of the problem in the rental market, which is an inadequate supply. So all in all, the trend lines for 2022 so far have been fairly robust levels of transaction despite the supply side constraints, where we see transactions coming back to pre-pandemic levels and even higher. However, we're also seeing a deceleration in the pace of, of price inflation, a trend line that we would expect to persist in the months ahead and indeed into 2023.